Congratulations, Nintendo Power, for hitting 100 issues 26 years ago. This right here is a monumental issue in Nintendo Power history, the 100th issue. I've always been a big supporter of milestones everywhere. The 100th episode of a TV show, the 10 year anniversary of something, the, the fifth day of the week. I love this kind of stuff because it's really cool to just get this, this all encompassing golden look of anything. Like, wow, big bombastic one zero zero. And on top of this already being cool, uh, this version that I got was pretty much brand new. It came in the uh, bag this was mailed in, uh, NP100. And it came with this little Nintendo Power's 100th issue commemorative Super Power Supplies catalog. I'm gonna have to take a look at this. What were they offering as a big celebratory event? Well, uh, the NP100 Gold Nintendo 64 controller. Now that is uh, worth quite a bit more than $30 nowadays. The N64 system house and game protectors, those are always available uh, all, all the time. Maybe not now, but back then, they were always available throughout the entire lifespan of the system. Ooh, very cool. We got a NP100 Gold Game Boy Pocket. $55, that was what that costed back then? That is insane. And on top of that, we also have, you know, travel case, Andros t-shirt, Star Fox 64 soundtrack CD. Uh, we have a Nintendo Power 100 t-shirt, bunch of accessories for trading cards and uh, your Nintendo Power magazines themselves. This is pretty cool, an MP100 commemorative coin set, which is pretty much just <laughs> the same designs, but they have Mario, Yoshi, and Donkey Kong on the back. The GoldenEye 007 hologram watch, that is pretty badass. Looks like the, you know, the watch from the game. Bunch of soundtrack CDs. This was pretty much how you got soundtrack CDs back then. The Donkey Kong and Mario plushes, uh, $100? To be fair, they are three feet. And uh, Donkey Kong is holding an N64. Well, I don't think it comes with it. Uh, you'd think they would specify, like, Donkey Kong does not come with the N64. But that looks like a pretty, you know, realistic N64. So, uh, they probably just put it there for size. Yeah, and they also have a commemorative watch for Nintendo Power 100. This was a big deal. But the only way we can truly discover is if it is actually a big deal is by taking a look through the issue. Uh, something I'm definitely very interested in here is that it has a list of the 100 best games of all time. Very interesting considering this issue came out in September of 1997. So <laughs> what what could be here? I don't know. Let's see, I wanna, I wanna be careful with uh, with flipping through it because this is in such nice condition. The power's on, it shows uh, the first ever Nintendo Power issue right there. 100 issues ago, Nintendo Power took off at warp speed. Free samples flew to millions of gamers. Exclusive reviews, power strategies, insider previews, maps, contests, the stuff of gamers' dreams. Big then, bigger now, with the insider track on the N64 and more. And if that doesn't celebrate the milestone enough, Vomit. <laughs> okay, so uh, the table of contents here looks almost like a senior citizen's shopping guide here. I don't know, just this style of <laughs> font and uh, stylization uh, just, just gives off a wacky little vibe. Some stock fireworks in the sort. Pretty cool. Here we have Player's Pulse. MP has come a long way since it's debuted in July of 1988. Player's Pulse used to be called Mailbox, and it wasn't until January 1995 that we started to regularly feature envelope art. A lot happens over 100 issues, and many readers have been inspired to wax nostalgia. This is pretty cool. This person drew Metroid 64, and that was featured here. We have a brief history of Nintendo. 1889, uh, Yamauchi founds his gaming company specializing in playing cards, Nintendo. 1980, Nintendo introduces Game & Watch. 1981, Donkey Kong. 1985, NES with Rob. 1989, It's a Boy, Game Boy is born. 1991, the Super NES storms onto the scene. 1994, Super Game Boy brings Game Boy to your television screen. 1996, the Nintendo 64 revolutionizes home gaming. In 1997, the Rumble Pack. This is a shitty ass history of Nintendo. Was Super Game Boy and the Rumble Pack really worthy enough things to be like, oh yeah, big moments in Nintendo's history, folks. So this is a bit of like a, a, a history of Nintendo power here. NES Journal, brush up on SMB3. 
Retired in Volume 16, NES Journal was one of NP's original features. The section featured random Nintendo news like the Super Mario Brothers 3 electric toothbrush. Oh, come on, I like them talking about dumb shit like that. NES Journal also covered non-gaming news such as the new television season. In Volume 2, it previewed TV 101, a series starring a then-unknown Matt LeBlanc, now better known as the dumb guy from Friends. Yeah, that was always kind of an interesting thing about kids' magazines back in the day. And when I say back in the day, you know, my back in the day was Nickelodeon magazine in like 2003. Uh, this back in the day would be like, you know, TV from 1988. However, uh, Nintendo Power and Nick Magazine had some similarities there because Nick Magazine would cover all kinds of random shit. They talk about just like random movies or TV shows coming up. It wasn't solely about Nickelodeon stuff, which uh, was pretty cool. So that's what they look like. The crew from Nintendo Power and Nintendo Power Source take a break to pose on the Sky Bridge at NOA headquarters. Uh, yeah, so that looks about like 20 people or so. Uh, and there's also like a big old Nintendo Power logo there. I'm not sure if that was actually like on this Sky Bridge at NOA. Or if it was like superimposed on in Photoshop, but uh, still, that that would be pretty badass if the Nintendo Power logo was on was on a bridge at uh, Nintendo of America headquarters. Sandwiched inside of every issue of Nintendo Power is a poster. Over the years, Nintendo Power has transformed Charles Barkley, Bart Simpson, Spider Man, and some of these colorful characters into pinups. Gross. With games like Doom 64 out, nothing's shocking anymore. Yes, in 1997, Doom 64 was labeled as the most shocking video game you could reference here. In 1988, it was a different story, however. More people complained about the cover of Volume 2 than any other cover. Severed heads and an actual cow heart just weren't as palatable back then. Okay, but like, I don't know, man. I've seen Doom 64. I've played Doom 64. There's nothing in Doom 64 that's as kind of fucked up as the Castlevania 2 Nintendo Power cover, that's genuinely a bit disturbing. Doom 64, I mean, like, you can't even fucking see that game, it's so dark. To work on the Ninja Gaiden 2 strategy guide, Dan Osen, one of Nintendo Power's original writers, journeyed to Japan. There, Dan and Howard Phillips discovered Tokyo Circuit, a roller rink come door go-kart track interesting title there. Dan and Howard ended up swerving and skidding through the course. All the while, the announcer was yelling at them in Japanese. We thought he was giving commentary on the race, Dan explained. However, when we asked one of our Japanese friends what he was actually saying, it turned out he was yelling, quit crashing, do you understand me? Interesting. So they're pretty much just talking about a lot of work stories that uh, all the Nintendo Power employees remember here. Uh, in volume 42, our poster boy was Michael Keaton as Batman. Heroic as he may look, the folks at the Batman camp didn't think Keaton appeared as square-jawed as the caped crusader should be, so our design team came to the rescue and touched up his jowls. Some of these seem a little strange to include here. Power charts. With 67 months of voter support under his belt, it's no wonder that Link can top both this month's power charts and our top 30 tally of all 100 editions of the power charts. No slouch by comparison, Star Fox 64 is renewing interest in its original incarnation and is inspiring gamers to become SNES Star Fox frequent flyers again. So this is pretty much uh, sales charts, I guess. Now I'm not sure exactly like how accurate this all is. They show absolutely like no like legit numbers other than just where they rank. But we can see here they're talking about N64, SNES, and Game Boy, as well as the most wanted games. Uh, with Zelda 64 being there, you know, it wasn't called Ocarina of Time just yet. And yeah, we can also see, in terms of the most popular games, uh, yeah, pretty much all Nintendo outside of two Square games and one Acclaim title. Most wanted, uh, we have the <laughs> Nintendo 64 Disk Drive at number three, followed up by uh, Earthbound 64, SimCity on Nintendo 64, which never came out over here, Clay Fighter 63 and a third is, uh, over Yoshi Story and the Nintendo 64. What? And Mario Kart 64 is there, but Mario Kart 64 is there. What? I guess that means like people who don't even own the games yet. It's not the fact that they aren't out yet. It's more so like, yeah, they want these. To celebrate our past 100 issues, we're not just looking backward. We're also looking ahead with 48 pages of scalding N64 previews. We've managed to get our hands on the hottest upcoming N64 titles for exclusive play tests. In some cases, we've scored some secret video footage and info from programmers at places like Nintendo. Oh, what? But also Rare and Iguana. Uh, they made the Turok games. 
Uh, Nintendo Power is the only insider source for hard information about the future of N64 games and the future is now. Ah, uh, here's a really cool thing I noticed. Uh, the page numbers uh, actually have all these issues of Nintendo Power on them. So you could, you could do like a little flip book and just uh, get this instant like uh you know like flash through nintendo power history that's really neat oh my god look at this the zelda 64 spread uh featuring this old ass logo this is wild we have yoshi's story with this uh old logo which i'm not even sure if these are like actual official old logos or if they're just kind of like something mocked up for the magazine but uh yeah i mean like that's that's not what the yoshi story logo looks like and uh, it's pretty interesting. This is, uh, they're actually talking about 2.5D here. They're just spelling it in a weird ass way. Two and a half D. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty much when you have a 2D game, but with 3D models of the characters. Uh, so, you know, Yoshi's Story was kind of one of the first games to kind of have that. 2.5D sounds like, you know, like if you call like Metroid Dread a 2.5D game, Sounds like there is more of a distinct gameplay difference between that and something like Super Metroid. There really isn't. So like, uh, there isn't really a difference between like Yoshi's Story and Yoshi's Island when it comes to like how you play the game outside of like what makes these games like unique from each other. So uh, yeah, I, I just don't really hear uh, 2.5D really talked about anymore, especially not in in that form. Banjo-Kazooie, another funky ass old school logo here. So many N64 games were just kind of like, like like they were nonstop talked about throughout the entire N64 life. Nintendo definitely had a bit of a problem back then with like just development, you know, 3D development kind of kicked their ass a bit in those early days. Much like how HD development sort of kicked their ass in the Wii U days as well. Ooh, now this is a fun little one. Conker's Quest, uh, obviously transformed into Conker's Bad Fur Day, the M-rated romp. Uh, but this is very interesting. I mean, look at this render of Conker, just full of just fluff and sh**. But it looks like they're mainly using the art from the uh, Game Boy Color game, Conker's Pocket Tales here. But even then, I think this is like they they redid it with like the, the fur texture and, and all of this. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, this looks like, like a completely different game here. There's like basically no similarities. I mean, to be fair, I mean, eh, that kind of reminded me of like the, the war level in Conker's Bad Fur Day, but he's not at war here. It's more so he has like a headlamp on. Yeah, just uh, pretty wild here. Oh, Extreme G! And WCW versus NWO World Tour. Uh, the wrestling games on N64 have a huge, huge fan base. Space Station Silicon Valley, a Rockstar Games joint. Could you tell? Oh, Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero. That's funny. Oh, Body Harvest, another Rockstar joint. When I say Rockstar, this was before they actually became Rockstar. Uh, you know, DMA design is what they used to be. But yeah, my God, is this 100 N64 previews as well? Look at this Quest 64 logo. That's not Quest 64. Oh, and then we have this whole player's guide area for GoldenEye. As much as the player's guide parts uh, just aren't as interesting to me, I always do appreciate the layout and design of them. It's like they really made sure to capture a lot of these games of vibes. And then we get the poster of the issue here. Oh, I love this. Look at this. Just a big old collage of all the Nintendo Power issues up to this point. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like, uh, you know, it does, you, you can't just put it up uh, on one side and you'll get all the issues, but still pretty damn cool. Uh, and it's also a little unfortunate that it doesn't really feel like like a regular poster. It feels more like a, an extended advertisement or extended part of the page, but nonetheless, I like it. 100 other things that equal 100. A uh, number of times Luigi has been overlooked to appear in a game. The number of coins I'll earn you a star in Mario 64. Price of rupees of a super bomb. Who was in charge of this? Approximate number of people who ran to the theater to see the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, wow. A week since Mortal Kombat 3 hit the stores. 
a decibel level of heavy machinery like the equipment used in Blast Core, a number of coins to earn an extra life in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Well, that you could just, oh, number of coins to earn an extra life in Super Mario World, number of coins to earn an extra life in Super Mario Brothers 3. I mean, they're, they're probably around here oh, somewhere, but still, oh, 100 shopping days until Christmas. Wow, thanks, Nintendo Power. A 100 best codes ever, just a bunch of uh, secret codes throughout all of gaming, which I really appreciate here. It's not just for the N64 era. That's what I assumed when I saw it said, oh, 100 coolest codes ever. I almost expected it to be like for the N64. And I'm kind of thinking like, wow, in 1997, you were able to find a hundred special codes? No, a lot of these are pretty well known. You have the Konami code, the Justin Bailey code from Metroid. Just all kinds of codes, man. Even codes from Super Tennis, wow. Counselor's Corner, kind of an FAQ that Nintendo Power would do. Blast Core, how do I get a turbo boost on the time stages? There's a lot of strategy guide type stuff here. Ooh, hundreds of prizes, hundreds of winners. Let me see what they're talking about here. First prize, 100 winners, N64 game packs. Second prize, 100 winners, N64 controllers. Third prize, some rumble packs. Fourth prize, some t-shirts. Well, hot damn. Nintendo Power picks the games, 100 winners scores the silicon. Well, that's kind of garbage. What if you get a game you already have, man? Well, this seemed a lot more substantial before I actually read it. Who the hell cares? Limited edition anniversary power tees? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Classified information, just more like cheat code type stuff. <laughs> the Jungle Book on SNES, yeah, that that's... Something you're gonna need to know that code for. Castlevania 2 on the Game Boy, got Pac-Man 2. Whoa, whoa, you can play the arcade games in Pac-Man 2? I didn't know that. The game sucked ass. That would have been awesome to know. Oh, and here we have the 100 best games of all time. Starting things off with Mario 64, you know, like I think the point of like a top 100 list is that you don't know what number one is for a while, man. How do you decide the best 100 games of all time? If you're like us at Nintendo Power, you get a bunch of your gaming friends together and hold a civilized debate, sort of like Roman gladiators having a tea party. It may seem civil on the surface, but we don't recommend turning your back for a lump of sugar. Who died for Tetrisphere to get number 50? Our 12 debaters representing every manner of gamer here at Nintendo nominated their picks for the best games from the libraries of the NES, Game Boy, Super NES, Virtual Boy, and N64. Virtual Boy completely struck out. Go figure. Wow, like... They, they were already burying Virtual Boy like a year after that damn thing came out. They just fully admitted it, man. I didn't, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize, I, I knew Nintendo buried it quickly, obviously. However, I didn't know they were vocally making fun of it at the time. All right, so Mario 64, number one, Link to the Past, Tetris. You know what? I, I think that's still a sound top three list. I wouldn't agree with it, however, I would, I, I understand it. I fully understand it. I think all these games would at least be in like my top 30, I'd say. Mario Kart 64, recency bias, man. That is total recency bias. And Mario Kart 64, I think had bias going into like late 2000s, early 2010s. I think nowadays we can all kind of look at Mario Kart 64 and be like, yeah, that kind of sucks to play these days. Still like a monumental, it is the king of the retro kart racers, and it has been the king for a while, but like, I, who the hell wants to play that anymore? Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Metroid, GoldenEye, again, like GoldenEye has that legacy. I think like top 30, like if we're, if we're taking bias out of here, top 30, I think GoldenEye belongs there. Number seven, that's still kind of the recency bias slash, if this list was made 20 years later, like, yeah, I would still get that just because, like, people are always like, GoldenEye, GoldenEye, GoldenEye! I think it belongs in top 30, but, like, number 7, nah. Final Fantasy 3 and 2, so that would be the, the Super Nintendo one, so that would technically be, you know, Final Fantasy 6, and that would technically be Final Fantasy 4. Uh, I think back-to-back -back is a little much. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy 4, I, I think probably, like, top 50. <laughs> Uh, I think Final Fantasy VI, probably like top 20 would make sense there. Street Fighter II Turbo? Uh, mm, I mean, you're only talking about the Nintendo games. I don't think you got Super Street Fighter II Turbo yet. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's Street Fighter II Turbo, whatever. I, I think, I think that belongs in the running, but number 10, 
meh. The original Zelda, Link's Awakening on Game Boy, Star Fox 64, the original Super Mario Brothers, Wave Race, Super Mario World, Tetris Attack. I love that placement. I love Tetris Attack. Yeah, I think Wave Race and Star Fox 64, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, they, they, they belong in the top 100 somewhere, but uh, I, don't, I don't know about this high, buddy. Uh, Yoshi's Island at number 18. The original Mario World is number 16. Chrono Trigger. The original Mega Man is number 20. Ah, uh, nah. That's a bit weird, man. Like, you know, I, I would consider something like, you know, Mega Man 2, obviously, or even Mega Man 3 uh, to be before Mega Man. Or even Mega Man X, you know? Where's Mega Man X? And I got a big problem with it. Donkey Kong Country 3? Is number 23? We have Mario RPG, uh, the original Castlevania, and then F-Zero, and Turok Dinosaur Hunter is 25. Buddy, what is your problem? Super Bomberman 2. International Superstar Soccer is number 27. Above NBA Jam! I mean, what are you still talking about today? To be fair, a lot of people start talking about this one. However, <laughs> I think NBA Jam has to be at least above this. Or Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl deserves to be above all of these just for how iconic it is, you know? Mario Paint is number 29? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I think Mario Paint is badass, but like... It's above, like, all this! It's above Donkey Kong Country 2! And then Donkey Kong Country! Uh, the original Metroid, have we seen Super Metroid yet? I don't think we have. Wow, and saying Metroid 2 is better than the original Metroid? I think these are both pretty similarly, like, archaic these days. Uh, I think Super Metroid is when Metroid got, like, oh wow, amazing. Not to say these games don't have their merits, but... They, they do have that old 8-bit stink of, like, ahead of their time, but it makes it really hard to play these days. Yeah, where the hell is Super Metroid? Either I missed it, or this thing is, is getting a little stinky, man. Okay, thank God. So, Dr. Mario on Game Boy. Dr. Mario on Game Boy specifically. That's a stupid version of the game. I mean, it works. It works on Game Boy, but it's kind of like, here's a game where you're trying to match pills of three different colors on a damn system with no damn colors. Tetrasphere is a weird one <laughs> to be here. Let's see, Killer Instinct Gold, Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania 4. And having Street Fighter 2 here, man, I, I would just have one. I would just have one of them, to be honest. It, it doesn't make any sense for me to have, have Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Street Fighter 2 here. Oh my God, Mega Man X is that low? That is wild, man. Earthbound is here. Uh, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. That's kind of like a cult classic on the original N64. Uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Yeah, these. Th this is all Faceball 2000. That is dangerously close to uh, Wario Land. Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, which is a which is a good platformer. Breath of Fire. Dangerously close to like uh, t Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, Gradius 3, Faceball 2000. And then everything over here is just kind of like Kind of some strange picks, man. Alien 3, True Golf Classics, Pebble Beach, Kickle Cubicle, that's a good puzzle game. Yeah, that is a that is an odd <laughs> that is an odd assortment. Not the worst. It's it's pretty okay overall. But uh just just some odd ball fuckers right there. I have a list of the best scores of all time. Uh, see if you can beat any of these wacky scores here. Uh, we randomly have the picture of the uh, the Coyote and Roadrunner in the back there. And Felix the Cat. I know they have video games. Or they're probably here. Like Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally. That's why that's here. Just odd picks considering Monopoly Man 2 on in a fish. There's a good Smash Brothers roster. New playing in our never-ending quest to bring you the best and most useful Nintendo game coverage on Earth, Nintendo Power proudly unveils the new Now Playing. This month, we're introducing the new features and giving some examples of how Now Playing will cover games. What's new? Our power meter rating was a bit hard to understand in the old format, so we've updated it, simplifying it, and made it more useful. So, uh, is this like a review? Okay, reviews. All right, GoldenEye 007, 9.0. It's number seven in the best games of all time. The graphics are an 8.9. I find 100 point skills to be funny. What's keeping it from a nine? <laughs> Play control an 8.4. It, it doesn't make it to an 8.5. Star Fox 64 an 8.4. Motherfucker, that was very high. On your top list of all times, the 13th best video game of all time is an 8.4 out of 10. Tetris Fear 7.8, yeah, that's dangerously close to that. And that was like number 50. Tetris Plus, 
uh, 6.7. The most comprehensive Tetris clone ever for Game Boy. It's Tetris. What, what are you talking about? It's also published by Nintendo. Why is Nintendo themselves saying this? Graphics a 6.4. What are you talking about? Oh, Pack Watch. Yeah, the upcoming games. I love this. All right, Earthworm Jim 3 or Earthworm Jim 3D. F1 pole position. Is this a Namco game? Is this pole position like Namco's pole position? I don't think so. I think I remember seeing that game before and just wondering that too. Uh, F-064, F-0X, Legion X, May 64, Madden 64. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, Tamagotchi for Game Boy. Uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff there. And, uh, you know, next issue, Volume 101, uh, Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. Yep. Yep, I can't, can't wait for that. And that was the 100th issue of Nintendo Power. What a funky ass thing to take a look back on. I mean, like, it's genuinely very interesting to see what people in 1997, specifically experts that worked at Nintendo, uh, thought of like, hey, what are the top 100 games? And when we say that, we mean games that released on Nintendo platforms of all time. And I don't think they made like a horrible list, but there's a there's a bunch of things I'm like, what, what is going on here? Either way, I think this was an incredibly cool issue, uh, an incredibly cool issue to have, an incredibly cool issue to have uh, in such fine condition. And I don't want to open this up much after this because it's in such nice condition. And these things are so, oh no! You see the paper is a little torn off here. Yep, it was good while it lasted. That works in some ways. <laughs>